Well, corporate virtue signaling, all the rage these days, but will it be enough to turn the anti-capitalism tsunami that is really upsetting the world these days? Big business trying to get in front of it uh, in the moment, and they really, what they want to do is they want to appear to be woke or concerned. Uh, consider this week, you got Levi Strauss taking on guns in the Second Amendment, Burberry ditching furs and pledging to stop burning unsold products. Uh, and then there's, of course, there's the marketing at Nike that takes on the national anthem. And that's just the start. I want to bring in our panel now to discuss Carol Roth, a future file legacy system creator, Melissa Armo, Stock Swoosh, and Michelle McKinnon, Payne Capital Management Senior Wealth Adv Advisor. Carol, I I'll start with you because this is something that I'm concerned about. Uh, and when I talk to, you know, I've, I've had an opportunity to talk to billionaires, I've had an opportunity to talk to some thought leaders on the, on the right and business owners, and they kind of play it off. They kind of don't think it's a big deal, but I, I, I do believe it is, and I see the political wind shifting, not just in this country, but around the world, particularly in the West. And I think if we don't find a way to stem this tide, we may wake up one day and Alexander Ocasio-Cortez is our new president. <laughs> Oh, please, no, Charles, I hope that that doesn't happen. I, I think the bottom line here is that right now we are in such a pace of disruptive change. We have so much disruption in terms of technology, in terms of the customers, in terms of employees, that businesses are really struggling with what to do, what messages to put forth. And right now they're experimenting, and I'm not sure that they're doing it in the right way. They're hearing things like, you know, social justice is a great thing, and so they're going down that track but it's not necessarily authentic. I think the good news is that pay, the pace of change is so fast that we will continue to see change. So I don't think we will just continue to go in the one direction, but I think it's important for companies to realize that there are a whole slew of different customers, a whole slew of different employees who have different opinions. And at the end of the day, if you take care of people, that's probably your best bet to create loyalty. You don't necessarily need to go down the social, social right. justice warrior route. Well, you know, we get the jobs report tomorrow everyone's going to be looking for wages ladies and we know that they've been they, that's been the one component of our economic boom that has not really kept pace corporate profits two trillion dollars last quarter up 47 billion uh, a lot of that money corporations are sitting on uh, you know what today united said we're getting rid of straws that's great that's cute i don't but in the last five years united stock is up more than 100 percent more than the dow jones industrial average uh, you know, two days ago, they announced they're raising their fees on baggage. <laughs> okay, they made $7 billion give, charging us to change a flight ticket. Michelle, I, you know, I don't know that you can continue to do that, continue to have this kind of prosperity on one end and not pay a price for it. I think the corporation's going to have to find something smarter than getting rid of straws. And I think they're going to because capitalism is going to encourage them to find a smarter way because the consumer, like myself, the millennials, as well as the Gen Zs, are going to want companies to be more socially aware and so they're going to be forced at, at to adapt. The, but, but you want them to see them make a real sacrifice, right? Something that might hit the bottom No, line. I think you can do both, honestly. And there's studies that show that companies that are socially aware, that are more environmentally, environmentally friendly, can also create profit. I don't think it has to be black and white, one or the other. I think it can be a gray. <laughs> Alyssa, uh, Bernie Sanders uh, issued the, the Bezos tax, right? Uh, think about this. If it was a few years ago, it might have been the Walmart tax, or a few years before that would have been the McDonald's tax. Instead, he goes after the guy who owns the Washington Post, which goes after, you know, uh, Bernie Sanders' chief political rival every single day, but he points this guy out, and other liberals are pointing him out saying, hey, you guys have $160 billion, and we want a piece of that action. Yeah, I can't name five things I agree with Bernie Sanders, but I will address this issue right now. He's not poor. His net worth estimated for 2017 is $2 million, so I'm not really sure why he's picking on I don't know that he's going it for himself. I think people. what he's saying is that, that, that <laughs> Jeff Bezos is worth $160 billion. Yeah, but good for and, him. And it, well, he's saying it's good for him, but he also has workers who, um, who get food stamps. Now, you may not think it's a big deal, but you only get one vote. There's 100,000 people who may work at Walmart who do think it's a big deal. There may be another 50,000 at Amazon that says, hey, Bernie Sanders has a point. You start to add that up, and you get upset elections in Florida. You get upset elections in the Bronx. You get upset elections in Georgia. And next thing you know, we may be in an economic system that we can't laugh about anymore. Yeah, but I don't think all of Bernie Sanders... His, what he said wasn't 100% correct, and this is the statement that Jeff Bezos put out. 
some of the people that are collecting these subsidies are part-time. Some people want to work part-time. They don't want to work full-time. In other words, sometimes working part-time and accepting the subsidies is the same as if they worked 40 hours a week plus. So that's what Jeff Bezos was talking about. And he said, listen, come in. Come and take a look at our, 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 our corporation. Take a look at the workers. See if people are happy. I really don't think that this is going to get everybody where they want to go. Right. By taxing the corporations, we, you know, we, we lower the taxes. Now we want to put another tax on them. It just seems to negate the corporate tax cuts that we just did. It just doesn't make any sense to uh, me. Again, though, uh, you know what? If these corporate tax cuts, you know, were resonating, M Michelle, the way people think they are or the way you, they probably should, then we wouldn't see the Republicans on the verge of losing the House in, in, in the midterms, right? So there is a disconnect. And, and if someone just goes out and says, well, Corporations made $2 trillion. I mean, as a politician, that could be suicide if the group you're talking to hasn't seen a bunch of money. Absolutely. It's political rhetoric, political rhetoric. And I think some of what Bernie Sanders is doing is obviously trying to drum up the vote. And at the end of the day, right, things are cyclical and parties come and go. So we might look at this right now and freak out and say, oh, my gosh, you know, the Republican Party is or is not going to be in party. But... At the end of the day, things come, things change, and I really feel in my heart of hearts that companies always figure out a way to be profitable, and I think they can do that now. You know, Carol, real quick, I do want to ask you, because there's a book out, Winners Take All, and one of the things it implies is that this new round, the current round of billionaires that we have, might be worse than the robber barons. Uh, you know what, Carnegie, Rockefeller, say what you will, they created millions of jobs, whereas, you know, if you're an Instagram billionaire, you might have created 10. You know, so there's getting there's additional pushback there as well. But at the same time, you have all of the billionaires who signed a pledge to give away the majority of their wealth, and they're investing privately to do things like eradicating diseases. There is a pace of change, especially in the free market. The companies of yesterday that you just mentioned aren't the big companies today. The companies that are big today won't be the big companies to tomorrow. There is always a pace of change. It is difficult to go through, and I do think at the end of the day that capitalism and free markets will prevail because that is what our country is based on. Here's the problem with socialism if you like say me and Michelle we both work together what if I work harder than Michelle sure, and sure. I have to give then part of my money to Michelle uh, I, I agree with I agree fair. with everything everyone's saying here what I'm saying though is that the political winds are such that I think uh, cap people who are champions of capitalism are missing out uh, and they think that they're explaining it, but the, the way they explain it, I think, often makes it even worse, you know. Uh, th then they need uh, to change, right? <laughs> something's got to change because if it doesn't, we may find ourselves in a system that none of us can become rich. All right, folks, speaking of that, we'll break down the markets next. It was a mixed day. Also, our preview of tomorrow's jobs report next.